Edward the Confessor, King of England, promised the throne to William of Normandy on his death. After his death, when Harold of England failed to recognize the promise his brother-in-law had made, William prepared for war. The long ships sailed against England, and at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, William of Normandy defeated Harold of England. There were knights from the Seigneurie of Fraiselière among the victorious Normans. The grateful conqueror granted them holdings in his new kingdom, and soon they began to acquire lands further north. <laughs> In 1109, they were established on the Scottish borders at Mead Part on the River Tweed, near Peebles, and the Seigneur of Fraiselière had become the Scottish Frasers. They spread further north. One branch, the Frasers of Philorth, settled on the northeast coast in Aberdeenshire. A wine vault, part of the original stronghold, still exists. This original castle Fraser, now a lighthouse, looks out over the grey North Sea to Norway, home of their pre-Norman ancestors. Since 1375, the seat of the Frasers of the North has been Cambalg Castle. Cambalg was acquired by the grandson of Tuch and Cowie, who fought for Robert the Bruce at Bannockburn and married Bruce's sister, the Lady Mary. The Scottish War of Independence established the Frasers in history. Their heroism and sacrifice brought them honor, noble brides, and rich lands. By 1618, Andrew Fraser of Muckle and Ma had completed Castle Fraser, one of the loveliest of Scottish castles. Between 1614 and 1620, he was awarded the chief arms of the family and afterwards was created Lord Fraser. The chief arms are now regarded as having devolved upon Lord Sultan of Philorth. 